Hello, Dustin. Hello. Here, start my video real quick. You should be able to see me in a second. There we are. Oh, beautiful. Wonderful palette, too. I like the red, the black, yeah, the white. Yeah, hey, you know, let me change my lighting a little bit so I'm not so washed out. It's a little, you know, it's a little dark in the room that I'm in, so I kind of got to get creative. How's that look? Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Great. We Great. pulled it off. <laughs> How are you doing on this wonderful, what day is it? Tuesday? Something like that. Yeah, it sounds like it sounds vaguely correct. Um, <laughs> I think it's Tuesday. I'm well. How are you? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. Couldn't be better off of You're out work. in Phoenix, you said? I am, yes. Great. What's uh yeah. what's Phoenix like this time of year? It's not it's probably nice, right? It hasn't gotten unbearable yet. No, as not yet. No, we're still we're still in sweater weather. I think it's like 90 degrees as a high. <laughs> so it is oh, still in the long awful. sleeves. Yeah, Just, yeah, I know yeah. when I got offered, sorry, I'm looking for a plugin, but I can keep talking. Um, no, no. When I got offered my headlining date out there, uh, at stand up live. I was just like, all right, Matt, does it have to be July? Is there, <laughs> it would be so <laughs> nice to come in one of the slightly more pleasant times, but then, you know, you guys are desert. So you get really cold during the winter too. It is true. A lot of times people talk about the dry heat, but they don't talk about the dry cold where Yeah, way it, worse. Yeah. It it's bone chilling. It's pretty mm -hmm. pretty bad. Yeah. But I was yeah, it it isn't too bad during the day though. The nighttime it gets chilling, but yes. I felt bad cuz I know during your special you were talking about you and your family you went to do a gig in, at ASU in August. Yeah. True story. Yeah. <laughs> The, uh, my, my, my then seven, eight year old felt the heat for the first time, asked if we were in hell. I said no. And then he saw the devil, the, the mascot of ASU. And, uh, and I thought, you know, you raise a valid point. You know? <laughs> and I, but I did just notice, and this is purely coincidental. Uh, I do have my uh, Arizona coffee mug. This is pure uh, I'm sure I got this at a thrift shop when I was playing laughs out in Tucson. Almost positive that that's where this came from. Oh man, it is uh, just oh so fitting. And yeah, exactly. um, there's a if you look on the inside once you drink it all, there is a slight devil on a design at the bottom. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> and just a baby little cactus. Yeah. 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 There you go. Oh, good. Well, we can go ahead and get started. I've been recording, but. Great. Um, welcome everybody that's listening to a comedy advice co podcast with your host, Stefan Sitani. And uh, this is where we're going to give a little bit of advice with some comedy sprinkled in and joining me today, very special guest. He's a hilarious comedian with a new special overwhelmed on Amazon. You may have also seen him on comedy central Netflix or Fox or heard him on his podcast. Don't make me come back there. Everybody please welcome Dustin Nickerson. Thank you. Great intro. Really good. Hopefully, while you hear that, you hear some of my kids screaming in the next room. Uh, I hope that that I hope that that goes in there. If you see me do this at any time, it means there. Uh, that's my keep it down next door. But yes, all those credits are true. And yes, I do have screaming children in a room next to me. So, you know what? I'm gonna ampl I'm gonna amplify it in post, so it's like a, an uproarious Great. crowd. Yeah, so CGI. I'm in behind me the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful and i was really nervous about you know the intro was great but i was just really holding to make sure that i got the nice tight landing on the name because um i had also seen one of your most recent clips with uh kev on stages yeah what was it? um don't to don't be too close for comedy don't uh i forgot the exact uh, name. keep your distance keep that's your distance that's it yeah yeah, yes. gotta gotta hit the K in my last name, and uh, that ended up being that's been a, the biggest clip I've ever had on YouTube on TikTok, and more people saw that than anything else I've ever done. Which is fun because I've never, I mean, I did that joke once before, but mm -hmm. you know, I was performing in front of a black crowd, and so they were going to get it more, you know, and mm -hmm. like it was, and and frankly, yeah. kind of be more open to the idea of the joke which is if you say my name wrong it sounds like the n-word and it does <laughs> and I've lived it and uh so it's uh it was one of those things where you're like great I mean 
this is best case scenario for this joke because I can't, it's not going to become a part of the act. I'm not going to do it on the Tonight Show. You know, <laughs> it's not <laughs> right. going to be just something that yeah, you, you, you're using all the time on every show that you do. So, um, you know, YouTube is very, very hard and tricky to get views on. And this is mm-hmm. like the first video. I think the first, the, uh, this one got like, it's at like 100,000 in like l- less than a week. And I've never had a video before that get more than like 20,000. So I'm just riding the wave, Stefan. <laughs> oh man, what a beautiful wave that is. And I it's thought nice, it was, yeah. And I thought it was such a wonderful video too, because it's like you said, you know, the mostly black crowd. And then you also set it up so nicely where it was just like, was were you improving with on some of the parts where you were talking about um who was it another comedian that was referring to he was like he he, you met me 15 minutes ago and you were referring to me as the white guy in the crowd yeah that's true jonathan slocum a legend in comedy was on that show and uh you know he was doing his set and i was in the crowd and he was like you know what i mean white guy and i was like dude we were just in the green room together (laughs) you know and it's i'm the only white male here and the only white female is my wife next to me who you also met so it, uh, you know, I had an idea. I didn't plan on doing that bit. I had thought about that bit many times. And mm-hmm. I was just like, I wonder if I can ever, but it was the first three or four minutes that set are, yeah, I mean, they're obviously I'm riffing on making fun of Tahir. And then I'm, right. you know, but those, that's one of those things that you like, I mean, to kind of dive into comedy stuff, like yeah. you, you had some ideas and then when they really started resonating with that idea, which that crowd was so lively that I could tell when they were really vibing with something that I was saying that I'm like, okay, I'm going to stay here for a minute. Like I didn't plan on doing the Nickerson bit, but then when he, you know, when he did in his set, he did a joke about, um, you know, like he said, like negative, is like like white people what was this it was something along the lines of like white people who want to use the n-word well you can say uh negative like my neg like negative you know short and then he's like oh, and yeah. that's what it what was the context he was like oh you can say a white guy and uh and then i was like well let's let's try this bit because that he did you know it was on in the context of the whole show um so yeah it was a, a very fortunate you know but if you watch i don't know if i put in the whole video the last joke the last tag to the last joke misses because i make a joke about reparations and they go so tight and it's a very fun moment where i go okay i was already tiptoeing i crossed the line (laughs) and that ended up being a, a relief of it too so i was i was i was happy with the set and i was happy it was cotton high def for to share with the world. But as is the case with many things, um, you know, mm-hmm. when you uh, get, you know, be careful what you wish for, because, you know, you get in that comment section and man, a lot of people really liked it. And a lot of people are like, I can't, somebody, I put this on Instagram. Someone said, didn't, didn't laugh once. And I watched it twice. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was hashtag no judgment zone and i'm like what? that sounds a lot like judgment that's funny that sounds like the epicenter of judgment exactly zone. so that so is... you know the comments i don't know i feel like the different social media levels of comments sting more the youtube ones don't sting too bad the tiktok ones don't hurt right. but i feel like the instagram ones hurt the most i don't know why instagram feels more personal it does. It does. And you know, I am, I'm also used to the sting of YouTube comments too, where similar in that vein, where somebody had said, uh, apparently people don't like my laugh too much. I've got oh. a very resounding and sonorous chortle. And so when I do <laughs> laugh, somebody had commented like, uh, that I, sounds like a Pokemon. <laughs> it's yeah. the evolution of guffaw, but <laughs> it, uh, it, uh, somebody had said, I tried to come back to this after a week, but couldn't get past his laugh. And oh I was my God. Just like, well, that's funny. A lot of people's favorite part of that video is there's a crowd member who has a very loud, distinct laugh, but one in 20 comments is like, why are they laughing so hard? This isn't funny. The laugh ruins this video. And it's just, you know, I, you tell yourself, I, I, you know, I had this thought this week when I was going through some negative comments, I go, I thought, 
there is no comedian on the planet it's really no artist on the planet entertainer on the planet that everybody likes nobody mm. agrees on everybody maybe like maybe outcast that you know, like, <laughs> maybe bruno mars i don't you know like it might be outcast honestly it may be but my yeah. dad doesn't like outcast but the point is you can't you, and when you put yourself on the internet you know you're just gonna the people who don't like you will share that with you there's no like if you were on the tonight show in 1984 and you know one week they had gary shanling and and the next week they have you well if they didn't like you you didn't know about it they never showed up in your life they never commented on it they just never bought a ticket to your show but the people who yeah. really liked you came to you now we have to hear from the people that don't like <laughs> us and that's that's a, that's a modern comedy problem you know that was not there before that that's true and sometimes they aren't particularly articulate about it either it's just like this guy sucks yeah or, yeah you, well i like when they just straight tell you you're not funny <laughs> and that's you're just like jeez like i mean just really going for it there just like the direct shot that which is one of the most like but it is a fair statement to them because in their mind you know comedy is so subjective and so they're just like no this wasn't but they never say it like that they're like you know i could see how some people like this but it just isn't my taste nobody says that that would be great <laughs> right. just like, this guy sucks <laughs> oh. <laughs> and and i think you had uh it's really cool that you kind of embrace it too because i had seen on twitter where you had posted about laugh planet they had a cool thumbnail talking about white guys right. black crowds and there was bill burr louis ck and you and me and that's like which is so funny the three of us <laughs> uh, but but it is really cool and i and going back to talking about something that i thought was really important that you had mentioned where you kind of feel things out and you improvise there a little bit and then you segue into these nice bits that you have and i think it's so cool and it really shows the the seasoned comedian that you are where you're not able to just kind of riff with the crowd but you're also able to apply it with other bits that you might have in your back pocket and you're like oh this is a good one for this almost like a, a yeah in settings like that that's what you're hoping for right like there are times that you're working and you're like listen i've got the special coming up or i gotta get this hour out or i'm working on new material and then there's right. sets where you're just kind of in the zone you're just trying to um, you know i knew that set the nature of that set was a lot of these people have seen my my special before because my special mm -hmm. was filmed by Transit Media, who makes the Kev on Stage shows. My special happened because of my first Keep Your Distance um, set where Kev and Transit both said, we want in the Dustin Nickerson business. And I said, well, let's, let's do a special. That's what I'm working on. And um, we kind of, um, in those type moments, you are kind of like, free to be loose and you also want to see if you can just separate yourself on some topical things and some newer mm -hmm. ideas and and that's the stuff that plays so well right now on clips that you're just like it's like we're all late night hosts at a monologue you're like well man if i can write a dr seuss joke two weeks ago like i mm -hmm. and, and get a clip of it and get it out like it, like that's that's the type of stuff that shares really well right now so thank you for the compliment that was one of those sets where you're like yeah you're very much kind of free to do that and i also only knew i had 10 minutes and so you're like mm -hmm. all right well you know i can play around here and i know how to get out if i don't and mm -hmm. we'll see what they resonate marin said this i don't i don't even remember where he said it it might have been on his show it might have been on his podcast but i remember he said like you're just trying to make a connection and i agree with that because like you would say you're just trying to get laughs but i say the connection comes before the laughs so you have to connect with them in some way you're trying to what energy are you and how do i give you an energy that meshes with this how do i meet you where you guys are at and then get you to come on board to what i'm doing here especially mm -hmm. when you have maybe some you know some uh you know some like heady ideas that you want them to go with you know if they're yeah. a rowdy drunk crowd then 
you better go out there and machine gun some bits for 10 minutes to get them to at least pay attention to you. You know, like I did, I did a set at a bar in PB this last, you know, two or last Wednesday. It was a total rowdy bar crowd. And I had to go do 30, 35. And it looked nothing like my keep your distance set because that was mm-hmm. a small crowd outside, um, sober, and you know like that was that setting but yeah i had to get that bar's attention for the first 10 minutes of my set you know so it looked and felt a lot different oh interesting and and i love that you use the word connection too because i feel like connection with the crowd along with connection with your own material is really important and it, it makes for a really great comic and i feel like you have this great connection where you've been doing comedy is it 10 how long have you been doing uh at least it'll be eight years this summer eight or nine something like that yeah okay and i and i know that you were just talking about too you might be working on material for your special and i want to talk about your special overwhelmed on amazon link is going to be in the show notes for everyone that wants to watch please watch and um you in in all the sets that i've seen you on there's been at least one or two moments where sometimes you almost don't make it to the punchline without cracking yourself up and I think that oh, makes... in the special, yeah, yeah. Oh, because of all the silliness happening around me, you mean, right? Yeah, and, and I also feel like you are really you're almost entertained by your own material in a way that tickles me to know because yeah. I, I feel like some people they can just go through the motions and just keep going through their bits, and there's a little bit of a distance between the saying of the bit and then the feeling of it. And I feel like your connection with the audience is on point and then your connection yeah. with your material I'm, is also- I'm not entertained by my material. I hate my jokes like any good comic. I feel <laughs> great when I feel them. When I feel them, ah. that's what I'm smiling about. You know, okay. I have, you know, um, are you familiar with Enneagram, the Enneagram tests and stuff? There's these different numbers. No, It's something my wife got into a while back. And it's very interesting. You know, there's different types of people. It's, it's similar to your Myers-Briggs and stuff like okay. that. But as has been described to me, and I, I really do resonate, it's like I'm an Enneagram too, which means like I'm very perceptive to other people's feelings and emotions. And to a fault sometimes where I'm like, oh, you know, if somebody's upset, I can't be happy. And I was like, well, that's not my problem, but I take on people's emotions a lot. But yeah. it means in comedy, and I've never probably, I, until you pointed it out and I thought about it, I've never thought about it. That's why I'm smiling. It's like, oh my gosh, I just, I feel your energy with me. You know, I feel you guys like this thing and you work. It's kind of like what, um, I think it's like what uh, bands talk about when it's so amazing that when somebody's singing your song, you're like, this is just this little dumb thing, you know, that on the, I, I penciled in a stupid notebook and I had the, you know, on my notes thing and, 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 and I worked on it and now you guys are feeling it. And that's uh you know, it's a, it is, it is a bit of a euphoria, you know, it's, it's a, it's, it's a powerful feeling it makes you happy. That's really cool. Until it's it... done. And then you hate yourself again. Don't get me wrong. I was miserable <laughs> after the special. I was like, God, it was awful to be around. And everybody that I talked to says that most comedians are like that. And that's been my experience is like, you like, they're kind of relieved, but they're just like, well, you know, that didn't go perfect. Speaking yeah. of things not going perfect, how did it feel to have that guy fall asleep? Wow. In, so in the yeah. front row. It's funny. I'm going to be posting that clip this week on my YouTube because it's been <laughs> about five, six months. And I was like, this is the highlight of the special for a lot of people. And it was when I, as it, so that happened the second show. Thank God it happened the second show because if it would have happened the first show, I would have ignored it because I mm. it was so important that I capture the special. But the first show went well enough that I'm like, all right, I can be looser this second show. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, I just, I noticed it a couple times early on in the set. And I was like, what is happening with, is he asleep? Cause I can't be boring him already because I haven't had time to do that. Right. And it just, I just kind of made, very similar to you know the keep your distance thing you go you just make a calculated risk you know you're you're up there to go back to your our our econ 101 classes or we're doing a cost benefit analysis you know like the cost is pretty high because you know if i if i go off if this goes poorly i'm screwed here it's gonna i'm only 10 minutes into my set 
but if it goes well, it's going to be a moment, you know, and, uh, yeah. and it ended up, be, so I was, and he was so responsive and, uh, it was, you know, it was, a, it was a great moment. And then he cleaned his glasses later and like, it was an ongoing thing with him. And, uh, so in the moment I was like, what? And, and, but as soon as it popped, I was like, this is, you're just kind of like living it, like kind of watching it as it's happened, trying to be as much in the moment as you can, but knowing like, oh, this is going to be, you know, um, the highlight of the special. And, and you think about like Burr has the one special where the girl leaves, you know, and then it comes back and it's like every special, every special, I got some, you know, and you just go, yeah, those moments, if you can capture them on a special are, are, are a pretty, pretty special. Mm hmm. And, and special it was, I do have to say. And, <laughs> and um, I mean, this, this special was so good, speaking of which. I know you, sp you, you. spoke about your, your family um, being a pastor, being very yeah. white, which I can definitely relate with. Mm -hmm. And um, also your dad a little bit and growing up there and, and potpourri, essential oils, lots, yeah. lots of great, amazing things. And I know that some of the material, obviously, since it was Corona related, I know you talked about inconsistencies with, with what scientists were saying based off of the data that was available. Um, right. So that was obviously one that had not been cooking in the oven that long. It was fresh because it, that had just happened. But had there a, a lot of the other bits for the special, have they been baking in the Nickerson oven for a while? Or yeah, was this yeah. All... And that's why I filmed why I did. They were, okay. you know, Louis, Louis talks about that with material. They have that, it has that fruit like life, right? Where right. it it gets, you know, at first it's a little rough and then it gets ripe and then it mm -hmm. can start to go bad. And I had felt that with a lot of the material that I'm like, because I had been working, so this time last year, really it was, I guess, I guess it would have been 13 months ago, I was supposed to have a showcase at the Hollywood Improv that mm -hmm. where we were inviting buyers out to see who would be interested in my hour and working with my agents. And we were going to do it with agents I'm, I'm not even with anymore because my agents got let go from their agency and I went with them instead of staying with the big agency. And uh -huh. But I... I uh, you know, that was kind of going to be the first, you know, step in the direction of, hey, you know, what are our options here? And and and, and if some, somebody want to make this and, and hope to film it at this time last year, um, it was kind of setting arrangements for that. And then the world shuts down Dang. and I go, I don't know that I can sit on this material that I like, that I've been telling for a long time. I don't know that I can sit on it for a year. And I also don't know that anybody's going to care about it in a year because like Roy Wood said, like, you know, all comedy after uh, Kobe died or before Kobe died feels kind of irrelevant. And, and I do think that there's a, a, a true statement to that. I think that we all, there was almost like a comedy reset button where like, well, what do you, mm -hmm. you know, like, I think the best stuff is timely. And that's why we did the special when we did. And we tried to kind of, make it as such that you know I, irene too who's a funny comic she said like you, she was there the night she goes this isn't a covid special but it is covid aware you know like you definitely right. know it was during covid it's outside right. people wearing masks and i yeah. talk about it a little up front but then i don't but by minute seven we're just into my act you know so we try to keep mm -hmm. it fresh and then just get into this material that i was hoping to I was hoping to burn, get rid of it. Oh, that's great. And a delicious bushel of berry <laughs> comedy it was. Because it was, and you're right, it was aware, COVID aware, but it wasn't just specifically about that. And I like that. And I think that's one thing that's going to keep it fresh for a little bit. That's the hope, too. yeah. Because you don't want yeah. someone to turn it on two years from now and be like, absolutely not. I'm going to, I'm not going to watch this, you know? Yeah, yeah, I get some PTSD. I did like, I know you had made a couple comments about the location. It reminded me back in my like teen years playing arcade games with like, uh, it looked like a level of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, with, yeah, uh, totally. Yeah, it did feel kind of like a double dragon level, didn't it? Like, just kind of <laughs> yeah. like you're just moving from left to right. You know, you could be, you know, you got to watch out for a flaming barrel that's going to get thrown at you. I mean, there were <laughs> barrels to, to my left. Yeah. So I could absolutely see that it did. Um, 
what did I call it? I, I mean, I made fun of the venue a lot, you know, just because yeah. it's it so silly. But I, th- I think you had mentioned this looks like the place where Batman's parents got murdered. I which did. And great... then I changed it later when I saw the toxins to it's where it looks like the Joker got made or the Joker became the Joker. <laughs> it really looks like a lot of things. But in reality, what it is, is it's just a little I mean, it's a parking lot. I'm in a parking lot behind a soundstage and they're like, well, this can be our stage. And there you go. But I mean, transit is unbelievable. Like it's a it's a yeah. beautiful looking special. You know, it's it's a very high quality when you're like oh outdoor special when you see it i mean there a lot of people released outdoor specials and to me this looks better than all of them they did a great job they really they're really really talented yeah i definitely agree i thought it was a that they made it look great i didn't realize it was a parking lot at all it looked like a special venue where like there could be a beer garden there yeah there should be it like oh there we go. And uh, <laughs> unconventional it was. Speaking of unconventional, I know that you would also, I don't know if you're still doing it, but we're doing backyard shows. Across oh, yeah, the I am. Yeah. So it was like, it was one of those things that like, I felt like the, the comedy world was pretty divided over shows on whether or not we should or shouldn't be doing them. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a lot of folks didn't think it was a good idea and then other folks were like whatever I'm just gonna do it no matter what it's fine and I landed kind of in the middle of I was like well I don't know that we should be doing a lot of indoor shows and certainly not packed out indoor shows that doesn't seem wise but what can we do and I just threw it out it started as just an Instagram post to my followers like hey who would be interested in this it ended up being like a 20 day tour of just backyards um and those are like the best shows in the world because what it is is like it's a super fan who plans it it's someone who's like oh i'm a i really like dustin and then they invite all the right people to that show like they nice. invite people who know are gonna like what i do so yeah it's yeah. just kind of a staple of what i do now it's that you can hire me and i'll come perform in your backyard if that's what you want and i'm happy to do it because Frankly, it pays better than clubs and uh, they're, they're super fun and they're unique and the video was interesting. And Mm -hmm. um, I also like, you know, it's like the punk rock Seattle kid in me. I like that it's independent. I like that it's, you know, I grew up, I remember, I remember when uh, Pearl Jam took on Ticketmaster and we're like, yeah, hell yeah, man, down with the man. Like, and that's what this feels like a little bit. You're like, I'm just taking it straight to the fans. I don't need... We don't need processing fees. We don't, you know, if you want to book me and, and, you know, I'll just bring it straight to you guys. And, and I, I, it'll be a staple of what I do forever. Now I I had one last weekend. I have one, I have one next month and then I have three in a row out in Iowa in June. And it is a little bit seasonal because you can only play certain parts, like, like Arizona, for example, you're like that Arizona might have the shortest window of any of them that you can do too cold during the winter i mean what months can you fall you could pull off a fall phoenix one right yes yes an autumn laugh fest i was gonna ask do you i mean for a green room do you go in the master bedroom and just wait yeah. there until showtime or <laughs> yeah i uh there that it's as far as accommodations go it's less than ideal there's a lot of uh like hey i'm the guy you know you uh uh-huh. you have you obviously your booker you talk to a lot as far as like where and some of them get it some of them like set you up in a like in their you know a room in their house or whatever but uh uh-huh. sometimes you just show up and you're like well i guess i'll just hang out here but you know a lot of time they don't even know you're the comic because only the people that booked you know you so uh but it's it, the venues it, what's fun about it is it becomes very much a collaboration with the person who brings you in because if you go through and look at the videos that i've shot it's like people get so creative and unique with the stages and the setup and the lighting and and that it's super fun. Oh man. I I think that is super cool. And, and such a, an innovative idea for being able to do something, especially it's like hard to find a balance. And I know that people, if they don't know a lot about something in this particular instance, like coronavirus doing shows and, and they're just like, okay, no shows. I almost see it as like being a lifeguard. Um, you know, you can hang out at the pool, just don't run on the deck 
and, right. you know, you, <laughs> you should be okay. Yeah. Well, um, and if there's anything that we learned in this last year is that nobody knows anything. <laughs> like they have absolutely in the last two weeks, the CDC has said, just kidding, it's three feet apart and it's highly unlikely that you're going to get it from surfaces. And you're like a year in, but that's oh what we, God. you know, that's not a critique of the scientific community. It's just all of us forgot how science worked or like the people who are like, oh, science changed its minds. Like, do you guys not remember taking, it's all about hypothesis. That's the whole idea. It's yes. like, well, this is what we think, but we could be wrong. Science is not God. It's supposed to change its mind, you know? <laughs> That's the nature of it. It's supposed to be like, our bad, we have some new information. Yes, it, you know. exactly. And, and, and I totally understand that and agree with that. The one thing I wish they could have got right the first time was the surfaces, because my wife, after every bag of groceries, she yes. was like, all right, you're going to clean these and, and clean them well. So yeah. cereal boxes, ice cream, it was all sanitized. And you wish they could have gotten it right. And you wish that like, it was so easy to not make it political. Like if at this time last year, Trump was like, hey, I'm wearing a mask, not an issue. It would have been a totally different pandemic because the mask became the thing. My buddy Zoltan Cassis, he had, he's so funny. He's, he's oh, like yes. my favorite. I he's saw so him good. live a couple months ago. Yeah. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, because he was there at it was he at the improv or stand up live. I don't remember. He, he was at the improv them. with Mark yeah. Norman. That's yeah. right. Gosh, that venue's too big. I did that. I've done that <laughs> improv once or twice. I'm like, this is a theater. This is not a comedy club, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's so big. But the um, but yeah, he's uh he had the bit where he said, like, we were all united for like two days, and then someone decided that COVID was a Democrat. And then, and that's exactly it. It just got so, but you know what? We, it's not like we had experience on how to handle this. It's not like, right. you know, you, hopefully you learn from your mistakes and we'll forget them all by the, what's the next one supposed to come around. They come every hundred, 125 years, something like that. Yeah. Around there. All right. Exactly. Something to look forward to. At, at least I will say on the bright side, my wife, she's from Brazil. And they were talking about the vaccine, whether or not you should get the vaccine. And so the rumor is spreading that if you get the vaccine, you will turn into a crocodile. And oh, it's but half joke. But I think some yeah. people are, are thinking that it might happen. So. Well, as a Batman fan, I, I, you know, the more the more croc killer crocs, the better, you know, we'll have right. some villains we will turn into heroes, it, you know. No, they'll, they'll, uh, they'll, they'll inspire heroes. It is crazy how like, you know, it just, you've, we've learned a lot about people this year and whether or not they're like your friends, whoever your friends are, you go, oh, are you naturally a worrier? Are you naturally someone who gets scared? Are you naturally someone who's just rebellious and doesn't, and, and just because you don't want to be told to do something, you're not going to do it. Are you caught, you know, we've learned and like the, you know, the vaccine is a really interesting one. It's the same thing. But one thing that I've noticed is like, uh, you know, those he the headlines about like how well America is distributing the vaccine is not making any news. Because what we're learning about people is like, well, if it's a good story, it's not as exciting. <laughs> you know? Yes. yes. Like, uh, oh, America's crushing it with the vaccine right now. Nobody, nobody cares. That's not a story that is going viral anytime soon. It's funny that you mentioned that because I was just thinking about that as I was talking with a friend that lives in Canada and they were like, we are doing horrible with right. the vaccine distribution. We just messed up on purchasing enough and we're just trying to make the mark of number of people that got the first dose. So oh then there's gosh. a wait of like three to four months between oh, first and second dose. Brutal, brutal. Yeah. So, but, but anyway, you are right. USA. We need I'm going to add in post just all the people. Behind exactly. Us, but... Yeah. Just don't mind those racist cops. Don't mind. Those... Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Well, we're about to jump into the advice portion of the Great. podcast, Dustin. But this was a, just an absolute pleasure talking oh, happy to do comedy it. and and um, everything else with you. But as we jump in, we're going to answer some questions that some fans have sent in from the advice column on reddit but before that i like to get nice and inspired with an inspirational quote oh, so great. i've i've got one in my pocket but before i pull that one out i like to ask my guests and it's okay if you don't but do you have any inspirational quotes 
that help motivate you in those mm. those dark days? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I the first one that jumps to mind, it's uh um because it's on my right mind right now, is uh Kev. It's Kev, you know, who's in uh, Kev on stage. He says, yeah. um, well, I have two that jump to mind. One, he said, um, he, it was just a tweet that he threw out flippantly probably six months ago that I think about almost every day. So he goes, uh, creators create and commenters comment. And I love that. It's such of mm. just like, like, oh, that's fine that you do this, but I do this. And it's not even like I'm, I'm better than you. It does just kind of categorize people because you do, you will look at the people sometimes that make these comments that you're just like, oh, you're just a nobody. You like you, you don't have subscribers. You don't even have a profile picture. Like you're just a commenter. That's your role and all of this. And then another one, yeah. and I, ha I hate that this is, I hate that I like the Tony Robbins quote. I don't like that this actually hit me, but he said in one, I saw in a video where he said, um, most people overestimate what they can do in two to three years and underestimate what they can do in two to three decades. And I really like that. And I think about that all the time. Every time you post something, it doesn't do as well. You try a new joke and you're like, oh, my career isn't advancing the way that I want to. Or you're like, oh, no, no, this is, we're long hauling it here. You know, I had too big of an idea of what this would be two to three years in, but I have too small of an idea of what this could be two to three decades in. Oh, that just to comment on those, because I'm a commenter, apparently. <laughs> I, I, I think those are great quotes. I also, for the first one, I wish there was some sort of distinguishing characteristic when you saw somebody before you um, started hilarious. talking with them, yes. like a haircut or something. You're like, yeah, okay, that's that's a yeah, commenter. like, OK, you've got a hat on. Now I know <laughs> you have your cat on a leash outside. Exactly. So that you're a commenter. screams commenter. <laughs> You've left at least three uh, one-star reviews on Yelp today. I can tell. <laughs> yeah, Yelp is the comment section for civilians. You know, just like people who live in the real world. That's the worst that they can get is, you know, someone gives them a bad thing on uh, on their Yelp and it gets back to them. Yeah, yes, exactly. And And the second one I think is really good because that's one thing that I feel like, especially today with um, with social media where you can get just that big hit of dopamine in a matter of nanoseconds yeah and you think okay oh look at this person did i want that now 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 it's it's really hard or really easy to forget that oh if i keep working at something then i can achieve great things and i feel like you're such a good example of that i've heard you on multiple podcasts talk about you know it's just a, a slow grind but you right. you keep um gradually going up and um yeah the, the, i always use the the comparison right there's no breakthrough it's not like that the game isn't like that i mean you can do the biggest thing in the world you can have a netflix special you can be on rogan and it, it doesn't we're i always think of us like andy and shawshank it's just every night we go chip away you know and he yes. chipped away for what is it 17 years and that's what you do you just kind of chip away and sometimes you get bigger chunks than others and sometimes you get a little breakthrough you know but there's no it just takes time and and honestly right. you're right. we're better for it we're better that it takes time because you become because like if i would have had like some of those first things like you you just change as a person and you change as a comic so hopefully you know, you kind of start getting recognized by the stuff that's most genuine and true to you anyways. And that takes a long time to find as a, as a comic. Yes. I think that incredibly inspirational. We are all in a prison, slowly <laughs> chipping away. <laughs> Will you get out? Trying Maybe. Yeah. Trying to avoid certain inmates and guards, <laughs> yeah. you know, trying to figure out who our allies are and, uh, who you are know, the commenters? Honestly, a, a lot of comedy club bookers feel like wardens. The warden, honestly, <laughs> they really do. That is, Being uh, taken yeah. advantage of, uh, doing shady deals with them. Um... That is very true. Yes, I'm trying to think of the uh, what the backyard owners would be or the backyard venue. The backyard people. gig is like... when the backyard gig is when they um, they get those beers on the roof. That's the backyard gig. It's just a little moment of reprieve for all, from all your mopping or what are they like tarring a roof, right? You're just like, <laughs> oh, and you sit down and even, yeah. I mean, we're just breaking down the movie Shawshank Redemption. Yeah, yes. Thankfully, Wait, everybody can... knows it. 
<laughs> exactly. Oh, man. Well, beautiful quotes. I've got one prepared as well. And this one is not by any person whatsoever. It's actually by a robot. Oh. And it's, its name is Inspirobot. And so its main purpose is to use AI to take some of the wisest words known to man or woman, just plunging into scripture and scholarly um, peace and work. And it just takes the best of the best and forms a quote. So I'll read this one. And Dustin, you can let me know how it speaks to you. Okay, I'll see if I can feel it. All right, all right. <clears throat> so this week in Spyrobot says, you are neat, almost as neat as a wheelbarrow. And that's the whole quote. That's the whole quote. I first, the first thing I thought is, I thought it said you are meat. And I was like, oh, <laughs> this is heavy. You know, I, cause if you are, you are meat is actually like a pretty like, whoa. Yeah. when you, someone tells you that yeah gosh i am just a slab of meat you know you you, you are, are meat. meat in a prison and you'll probably never escape oh so. man as neat as a wheelbarrow well there you go <laughs> maybe a, maybe a wheelbarrow oh, is so is a wheelbarrow is such a it's crazy that that's the best thing we could come up to do that job because it yeah. looks it's designed all it looks like it wasn't it looks like we should have made something better since then, right? Like something better than this clunky three wheel. What has three wheels? We don't use three wheels for anything. And I guess three I... wheels, it's, it's got these handles. It looks all, it's all too wide, but if you need to move some dirt or you need to move some logs, <laughs> I mean, it's your only option. You're not going to lug a wagon, you know? It's really funny to think about that too. That's a great point because when has when has the last innovative like surprising moment come for the wheelbarrow maybe Truly. like the late 1800s whereas yeah. my washing machine i feel like it can make appointments to get a haircut for me Honestly, obviously it, yeah it'll I, cut your I, hair for you you just get it in just, there yeah yeah the wheelbarrow has just been slow and steady it's just been there it's just been steady it's been you know uh it's been the it's it's nothing flashy, but it's always there for you. You know, it's Wendy's. It's not, you know, you're like, I know I can count on it. I know I can count on it. I don't always pick it. I don't always need it. But when I need it, I know it'll be there for me. You know, and maybe we are like the wheelbarrow in that regard where we are slow, we are steady. And as you fill a wheelbarrow with yeah. things, you can mm. fill a person with things. And mm. sometimes they can transport it and dump it in other places That's maybe true. some sometimes a little more sloppily than others yeah i was thinking that i'm a wheelbarrow and that i'm really only useful for one thing <laughs> you know like that's i i don't bring any other things to the table i am i'm good at comedy and i have no other skill i'm good at one job and nothing else you know, I feel I as well am in that. I, I, I yeah. need somebody to actually lift me up as well, because otherwise I'm just going to stay down. Exactly. And, that's uh, true. And someone has to do the, the heavy lifting still. Somebody. Yes, exactly. Somebody has to constantly carry me to get me anywhere. So, <laughs> you know, I don't know how inspired I feel, but I do feel like we were able to take that quote yeah. and uh, carry it. And now we can dump We it. got something out of it. We, we really did. Beautiful job, Dustin. That was amazing. <laughs> so we're going to dive into the questions. We've only got two, but this first question is from the Reddit advice column. Our fan Isaiah brought it in. Thank you, Isaiah. It says, <clears throat> I'm cutting my hair on my own and need some advice. So I'm getting my hair cut tonight. I'm cutting it short and I wanted some advice on how I should do it. My hair is super long. Any help would be appreciated. Don't try to talk me out of this because it's happening. Best I can do is school or kitchen scissors. I know this sounds crazy but I need this. That was all one sentence, by the way. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I read like that. I didn't, I didn't sense a lot of punctuation in it. it you know, <laughs> frankly, it reads like a, a panic note, you know, like, like a hostage, <laughs> you know, like they had to scribble it and it couldn't waste with time with any capitalization. <laughs> there I, was also I, like an emotional outburst in the middle of it too. Don't try and talk me out don't of Don't you dare. <laughs> well, are you, you know, you're the long haired guy. I think you got a lead on this one. I don't, I don't, I don't know what to tell. I would say, you know, make it, yeah. um, I would say less is more. Don't try and take any risks. I would say you get real utilitarian about it. Just go basic, just kind of try and make it a shorter version of what you currently have. 
This isn't the time to try and get cute. This isn't the time to try and do a fit. Just whatever level you're at, just try and make it a little, a little bit shorter than that. And so that, um, and you know, have a hat ready, you know, hopefully you have a job where you can wear a hat. I like that the backup plan. And I feel like in the army is that they say a man is only as good as his wheelbarrow. And yeah, so you've got, yeah. <laughs> so if you've got, what did he say? Kitchen scissors or school scissors. Yeah. I don't know how much of a good job that's going to do no. on the, the old hairs. So I think, like you said, maybe a snip here, a snip there. Yeah. And just, just do what you have short. to do. If you just want to get it off your shoulders, you want to get out of your eyes, just do the absolute minimum, you know, don't, or just like, you know, I mean, you can't buzz it because he doesn't have the thing. Maybe just do a, uh, maybe try bowl cut, you know, it's going to look ridiculous, but at least you'll know how to do it, you know? Yeah. At least you'll have some sort of instructions on, you'll, you'll have the guideline right there. Exactly. You just put it right there. And I then the move. If, I like that. And if you want to, maybe you could add some style to it. If you just move the bowl ever so slightly as Great. you cut, so you could Love get that. a little bit of a, a wave going on. Yeah. I think we really helped Isaiah here. I th yes, I think um, he's ready to make the cut. So <laughs> we're going to move on to, before we get to the last question, I've got a segment called Positive Spin. And this is where a bad, si we, usually in life, bad things happen to us. What do we think about right. the negative? So I have a scenario and Dustin, you're going to help us think of the positive so we can help train our minds, start to think towards productively solving problems instead okay. of just complaining. Okay, I like this. All right. So I heard you on the self helpless podcast, as well as the um, as your podcast with, by the way, congrats on the new cover art and adding Melissa to the logo. Thank you. Ooh. You know, it only took a year for me to commit to getting her on the logo, but she's yeah. there now. Yeah, it, that's what matters. That's what matters. And um, I know you had talked about on the self helpless podcast, your kids don't have social media. Mm -hmm. And um, I so this scenario, this is very specific to Dustin Nickerson, by the way, your children all, I don't know, magically acquire phones mm -hmm. and one free year of data plan. And uh, they end up getting on social media. Then they get more followers than you and verified. Yeah, I've thought about this. Yeah, I've absolutely. <laughs> specific. I, I have thought about it. What it would it be like if my kids had more followers than me, you know, and I, I, on the one hand, I'd be really jealous, but on the other hand, um, they can't uh, get any of the money until they're older anyways. You know, you can't, you, you can't get a check. You're like a child actor. So I would celebrate it because I, I would just be making more money. And I'm like, great. I don't, I've told them before, like, I wouldn't be on social media if I didn't have to. Like, this is right. a right. work thing for me. So that's an easy spin is if they're, if they've got more followers than me, then that's just more more money in my account. You know, I can just go full like bad celebrity dad, you know, like when you have a kid, just take it from them. You know, I like it. And then I, they, you know, I could use their money to build me a nicer studio, you know, in the space. This is a good news, actually. I'm, I'm really excited about this now that I think about it. Oh, I love that. I, you could have the new studio and then built by the Nickerson offspring and uh, exactly. Yeah. This is, oh, yeah, it's I, good. I love this. All right. Well, you just, destroyed that that was wonderful so Easy. last question this one again from the reddit advice column it says how to divide three people and two bathrooms hi everyone college student here we originally had a three by three apartment i'm guessing three bedroom three bath but due to some crazy circumstances our landlord switched us to a four bedroom two bath we're trying to contest it but it's not looking good so what are some ways we could fairly figure out who shares a bathroom and who gets one to themselves. We're pretty stressed out. None of us like conflict. Anything helps. Oof. So Dustin, I know you got married at 19. Besides yeah. your wife, did you have any roommates or have to share? I went, uh, I went from my house growing up to living with a roommate for about a year and then moving in with my wife. I have never had a house that had more than one bathroom. I, my current house has six people to one bathroom. So I have zero sympathy for this situation. I, <laughs> what you, four people can occupy two bathrooms. No problem. This is not a problem. Are you in the bathroom that often? 
you know, like <laughs> there doesn't need to be a schedule. There doesn't need to be, you just use the bathroom when you need to. I would say, I would not, you know, I mean, I would say that the, the first thought is you're like, okay, well, two get this one, two get that one. I would ditch that. I would say all, both bathrooms are everybody's bathrooms and you maybe keep your stuff in a uh you know a little shaving kit so you can be mobile for showers as you need to and that just prevents any hurt feelings or any backup because you just you use whatever bathrooms available when you need to so now you have four people using two bathrooms there'll be one open all the time this isn't an oh issue my God. and then you just create a uh you know create a schedule for cleaning of course you know right, uh right. that's that, that's you know that's roommate stuff 101 but I would, I, I would say they open, you know, they all the bathrooms are all the people's. Give I love people. that. And, and you know what? It makes it feel like it's this nice, it's almost like you're traveling. Yeah. You, know, you can have it as these public bathrooms, not the ones like 7 Eleven where you have to have the little spoon with the key on it to get yeah, into the bathroom, but yeah, more like an exactly. airport one where you can, right. you know, it's a little clean. And, uh, and that way, when you, so say, you know, say, say me and you are, we got assigned to a bathroom. Right. And, you know, our other two roommates have theirs. Say we go in and, you know, you're in there and you're like, ah, gosh, you know, I don't, I, I, what are the odds that Stefan got in there right before me? There's none of that. There's no hurt feelings. There's no, you know, just go use the other bathroom, man. It's no big deal. No big right. deal. Right. Exactly. Oh, easy, I, easy. I love that. It's a, it's a little, uh... it's a little bathroom utopia. Oh, beautiful. Distribution of wealth, distribution exactly. of, uh, of uh, yes bathroom i guess <laughs> awesome well what a beautiful way to spin and swirl that one dustin thank you so much we've reached the end of the podcast but first Great. off thank you so much for joining and, and thank uh, you for having me appreciate it absolutely where can people find you what have you got to plug where can people follow you all that good stuff all my stuff is if you just go to my website dustinnickerson.com that has tour dates that has links to my specials links to my social media links to my pod all of it's just right there you know, a little one-stop shop. I don't know how many of your li listeners are in the air in Phoenix, uh, but I will be out there headlining Stand Up Live on June 30th, in addition to other tour dates across the country. So uh, check those all out. Oh, exciting. And the link's going to be in the show notes. So listeners, all you got to do when you're in that shared bathroom, just click on the show oh, note link. Perfect. And then, bam. Awesome. All right. We'll, well thank it. you, Dustin. Thank you, listeners. And we'll talk at you next week. Thanks so Bye -bye. much. Thanks, man.